What is going on there YouTube and welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different kinds of comic book stories from Marvel, DC, and even IDW as well. This time we are going to jump back over to DC Comics and we are going to pick back up with Hal Jordan in the Green Lantern Corps. In this video we are going to see the end of the alliance between the Green and Yellow Lanterns. The question is, what happens in this story that ends the alliance between the two Lantern Corps? And so if you like today's comic book video, please leave me a like down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. But I do hope you enjoy today's video. So the way we begin this story, we pick up in Space Sector 1800, where we pick up with a planet called Planet Vault, where this planet was man-made, but built with high level of security because it is basically a planet that is just a bank. Now with their high level of security, it means that no one has been able to break into this planet. And so space raiders never have been able to get inside until today because they have an inside man, someone who has been going through a lot and was down to help out. And so he brings down the shield and let the space raiders inside. This is where the story shifts over to Mogo, the home planet of the Green Lanterns and now the home planet of the Yellow Lanterns as well. Remember that at this point, the Green and Yellow Lanterns are working together to keep peace in space now. Both stay on the same planet. That is when they get a call from the Planet Vault about what is happening right now. And so with that happening, you have Jon Stewart basically tell everyone to get ready to go to protect Planet Vault from whoever is attacking. And so you have Jon Stewart send Hal Jordan and a few other lanterns to go out there to handle that issue. Now we learn who is attacking the Planet Vault, which is the Cephid Raiders. I know I just butchered that first name, but they are being led by Bofunga, and I know I just butchered that name as well. And this dude is trying to get his name written in history because no one has been able to break into the planet vault. But the point is you have the Green Lanterns arrive at the scene to stop this evasion. And so of course you have this big epic battle between the two sides where it ends with the Green Lanterns being able to defeat these guys in a matter of seconds. And so honestly, it seems like whatever, right? This is where we pick up with how Jordan checking up on Tomar too, because he almost got him and his partner killed and he is moving too slow and seems exhausted all the time, but he tells how nothing is wrong and leaves. This is where we pick back up on Mogo, where you have Kyle Rayner talking to Sorenik. Remember, they used to be a couple a long time ago in comics, but trying to get back into becoming a couple again. Except this time, Kyle is also trying to make Sorenik stop being the leader of the Yellow Lanterns and become a Green Lantern again. Because in our last Hal Jordan in the Green Lantern Court video, he fought their son from the future who turned evil, like Sinestro did, wanting the Yellow Lanterns to rule everything. But after his future son Sarko died, his goal is hoping that with him and Sorenik being Green Lanterns, that their son in the future will be a good guy. Now, she does not know about her future son, but she tells Kyle she will think about it and give him an answer later on. This is where we pick up with Hal and John visiting their new prison, Bofunga, and I'm having a hard time pronouncing that name, where we learn that apparently John and him have a small past, but that's not really important. What really is important is that you have Bofunga tell John and Hal that he knows about a Green Lantern who has murdered somebody. Now you have Bofunga use this piece of information as a way of leverage. If the Green Lanterns do not let him go, he will broadcast the murder live for everyone to see across the universe. And this of course brings in the idea of Bofunga telling the truth here. And you have John thinking they need to investigate this. But you have Hal thinking that Bofunga is lying. 
There is no way that a Green Lantern on their roster is a murderer. Except you have John tell how they need to make sure because if they do, they need to figure out what to do next. But the story reminds us again about Kyle trying to convince Sora Nick to stop being a Yellow Lantern and join the Green Lanterns. Except this time she gives him a reason on why she cannot join as a Green Lantern. The reason why is because when her father made the Sinestro Corp, well it was full of criminals. And so the reason why she is staying a Yellow Lantern is because she is watching over them because they are following her orders and not out there doing horrible things across the universe. But you have her leave and that is when she walks into Hal Jordan where he asks her if Tomar too came by her nursing office since he was not feeling well. And she says no, but Hal mentions how ever since the Green Lanterns dealt with Sarko, Tomar too has been acting strange. And then Sorenuk realized that so has Kyle Rayner as well been acting strange ever since the whole Sarko situation. Except the story does shift over to Guy Gardner because we got to give him some shine time here. Where we see him right now out in space with his partner, Arkillo. Where we learn that Jon Stewart gave him a mission to find the home base of the Space Raiders from earlier, the same one that Bofunga belongs to. Except we see our two lanterns go there to basically wreck havoc, but to also to see if they can find this intel that Bofunga has on the Green Lantern that has murdered someone. And so we see Guy Gardner and Arkillo just wreck havoc throughout the whole base looking for this intel. Now John did not tell them about the Green Lantern who has killed someone, just go gather this intel. And when they walk into a room, well, they find this spy imp. And this imp is holding the intel on that Green Lantern that kills somebody. But we get back to Soranik who goes to the morgue where she wants to look at the body of Sarko because after the lanterns dealt with Sarko, Kyle has been acting weird and he brought Sarko body back here to Mogo. And so you have Soranik start an autopsy on Sarko's body trying to learn more about why Kyle has been acting weird. Something must be special about Sarko. And this is where she learns that Sarko's DNA is 50% human DNA, which makes her freak out because her ring tells her that DNA belongs to Kyle Rayner. But since Sarko's body is from the future, it starts to disappear back into its own timeline. But right before it leaves, she learns that Sarko's other half of his DNA belongs to her. And so now she is upset that Kyle hid this secret from her. But to close on the second chapter of this book, we see Guy has handed over the spy imp to Jon Stewart to look at, where Jon looks at the information the spy imp is holding in private. And while that is going on, you have Hal checking up on Tomar too. And this is where you have both of them find out that Tomar too is the killer. The spy M shows John the scene of the crime and for how he sees Tomar 2 is exhausted except he looks over to see that Tomar 2 has been using all of his energy to trap a yellow lantern ring, letting us know that he killed a yellow lantern. This is where the story jumps a while back, where we actually get to see Tomar 2 commit the murder where him and his Yellow Lantern partner were going after another Yellow Lantern who is an outlaw. This second Yellow Lantern is from the same race as Tomar 2, but his name is Romat 2, except Romat is a mass murderer. He has killed children as well. And so you have Romat tell Tomar how much he enjoys killing children to the point it makes Tomar angry so angry that Romat pushes Tomar to kill Romat. And we learn that to keep this secret of him being a murderer from getting out, he has been using his powers to keep Romat's yellow lantern ring from finding a new host. But of course, the M-Spy saw it happen. 
this leads us back over to the present day and this is where we pick up with Hal and Tomar too where Hal is having a hard time believing his old friend has killed someone except you have Jon Stewart walk in and tell Hal no it is true Tomar too has killed someone and now he has to pay for it and so you have Jon tell Tomar too that he must give up his ring and get ready for his trial because Tomar too is about to go through a huge process because he is a killer and you have John Lee because he has to tell both Yellow and Green Lanterns about what had happened. Now we pick up with Kyle Rayner who is outside just minding his business and painting as well except this is when you have him be confronted by Sornik who is upset with the fact that Kyle did not tell her about Sarko except another reason why she's mad at Kyle is because she did a whole autopsy on her own child and so it made her sick that she had to do that to learn that her son was Sarko. Also the fact that Kyle knew about it the whole time and did not bother to tell her and the reason why he wanted her to be a Green Lantern is because he was hoping that when she becomes one, maybe their future son will be a good guy. But with all of that happening, you have Sornik tell Kyle how mad she is at him. And then she brands the yellow lantern symbol on his chest and leaves him on the ground passed out. Now while she was doing that, you have John go and visit Bofanga in his jail cell where Bofanga thinks that he is going to walk free except you have John tell him how they have his whole crew and they got the video footage of the killing as well and he is not going anywhere. So basically telling him, hey man, your whole plan failed and you are going nowhere. But this leads to the big moment where you have John Story get on the loudspeaker and announce what has happened. That basically Tomar 2 has killed someone and that person was a Yellow Lantern. That Tomar 2 will be going on trial for what he did. Except of course when the Yellow Lanterns heard that they immediately rushed to the room of Tomar 2 to kill him for what he did. And so we are about to see how Jordan defend Tomar 2 from the Yellow Lanterns. Honestly, we see Hal just beating down on all of these Yellow Lanterns like they really thought they had a chance to stop Hal. He just throws them all over the place like they are nothing. This leads to everyone stopping because Guy Gardner walks up and he is holding Kyle Rayner who is still knocked out but branded with the Yellow Lantern symbol on his chest. And so they are wondering who did this where you have Aquilo threatening his fellow Yellow Lanterns to tell him who did this to Kyle Rayner. Where you have Sora Nick tell the Yellow Lanterns about everything. How the Green Lanterns are a bunch of liars and they would rather hide things from the Yellow Lanterns and not tell them the truth. And to her, Jon Stewart should have told her about the possibility someone was a killer. And then she goes on to tell the Yellow Lanterns that one of the Green Lanterns kept a huge secret. The grandson of Sinestro. And so you have her say, Green Lanterns are not to be trusted and now she is going to end the alliance and wants to kill the Green Lanterns. Where we see John actually try to convince Sorenik not to do this, not to end the alliance between the two Lantern Corps, except Sorenik is not having it. She wants it to end. Now you have John ask if there are any Yellow Lanterns wanting to join the Green Lantern Corps, which some do, but of course this leads the guy asking Arkilo if he's going to join and Arkilo says no and this ends their newly formed friendship. Of course with everything happening in the last few pages we see the Yellow Lanterns and the Green Lanterns begin fighting against each other. This leads to a huge battle between the two sides where this does seem like something big has to happen to stop this fight before someone is actually killed. That is when we learn that Jon Stewart actually has a backup plan. 
This is where we learn that John Stewart had put a safety measure in the newly formed Yellow Lantern power battery, where the Yellow Lantern rings are weak against the power of will, kind of like how in the older comic book days, Green Lanterns were weak to the color yellow, except he did this because he knew something like this could happen one day. And so he put that in their power battery just for that reason. Where you have Swordnake starting to sound like her father, a mad woman, and wanting to kill all the Green Lanterns and rule the universe. But this scene ends with the Yellow Lanterns just leaving Mogo to retreat and saying they will come back later for revenge. And the way the story closes, we actually pick up with the aftermath, where we see the Yellow Lanterns who wanted to stay with the Green Lanterns actually stay and they become Green Lanterns. But we also see that Tomar too sends his ring off since he is going to jail. But he asks his ring to find someone who is from his race because he believes that someone from his race should represent his race as a Green Lantern. And these things are not really that important. We then jump over to the Antimatter universe where we pick up with the planet Quad and I really hope I pronounced that part correctly. And this is where we just see a random flash and two people appear. One of them is Sinestro and the other one is actually Lysa Dark, who is Sinestro's girlfriend in a way, except they came back from somewhere. And we see Sinestro is alive, but badly injured, letting us know that Sinestro is going to come back with the vengeance down the road and this is where we're going to end today's video and so guys please leave me a like down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future also any suggestions on books i should read well please let me know in the comments below because you never know your suggestion could be a future video down the road but guys i'm out of here and i will see you on the next comic book video later guys